Hi, I'm FTP, a flat track protocol of Down Under Debbie TV, and I'm going through the basics of CRG today. So this is the video to watch if you've never used the scoreboard before, if this is your first time as a scoreboard operator, or you want a bit of a refresher of just what all of these buttons do. This is the front page uh, of CRG scoreboard. We're going to assume today that your tech person in your league has set up the scoreboard for you uh, or have watched another tutorial that we're yet to produce on how to actually get it running on your computer. Uh, but for today, it's got running, you've got sat in front of it and you want to know what to do. The first screen you need to be familiar with is the main operator panel. Uh, the login, in this case is uh, the preferences that you've got set, things like keys. Uh, so if you log in again with the same login, you'll get your key mappings back the way you like it. We'll cover key mappings in a future demo. Today we're focused on just the basics to get you up and running at scrimmage as a scoreboard operator. The uh, things that you want to do first, set a team name. So you can do that by clicking on the team name on the scoreboard and we'll enter the new name and press enter. So click on team two and we'll set that to white, press enter. And you probably have a projector or some other display set up with the scoreboard displayed on it. And you'll notice the team names are automatically changed in that display reflecting that. There's a few other things to get familiar with first. You have five clocks along the bottom the intermission clock, which runs uh, pre-derby, intermissions, end of game, and any time that the period clock's not running, the timeout clock, which runs during timeouts, the lineup clock, which runs b between every jam, the jam clock itself, and the period clock. The clocks are automatically triggered after each other uh, based on the other buttons, so you don't need to worry too much about all of these buttons down the bottom uh, on your first time, but it is convenient to have the clocks in front of you. So we're going to start by starting a jam. You'll notice that the period clock and the jam clock both automatically start together and start counting down. Now there's uh, some action happening on the track and you're watching the, uh, or listening to your scorekeepers as the scoreboard operator, watching the jam as if there's a uh, very few of you, and you notice the lead's called. So you have some buttons here on each team for lead and some accompanying buttons for no lead or lead lost. So no lead's used when, uh, say you've accidentally clicked lead, you can just go, oh no, I didn't actually mean that. Or in the case of lead was correctly awarded, however, they will quickly send to the penalty box. You can set it as lost, and that will reflect in the various parts of the scoreboard. So we'll just stop that jam. That's the next button to be aware of is stop jam. So as soon as you hit stop jam, the lineup clock starts ticking, and the scoreboard is updated appropriately stating it's now a lineup clock. We start the next jam, we'll notice the lineup stops. Uh, normally that wouldn't happen until the 30 second mark and, uh, and in conjunction with the whistle, um, but for the sake of this demo we're, we're starting it a little bit early. As you can see the clock's counting down again, we're going to award lead and check that yes it has been reflected on the projected scoreboard. Now one thing we haven't done yet is awarded any points, so let's get to that one. Start jam, a couple of seconds pass, you hear the two whistles, leads awarded to the white team, and she's off out of the pack while the black jammer is stuck in there. She comes back around and makes a full four point scoring pass, so we add our four points. She goes around again, we add four more points, she calls it off and we hit stop jam on the fourth whistle so the clocks all line up nicely. Remembering that under the new rules, the scoreboard contains the official game clock, uh, so it's important to get these start jam and stop jam buttons hit at the right times, which is why uh, I highly recommend using those keyboard options I was talking about earlier. So we'll start another jam now. We'll notice the clocks are running. You'll notice the jam counter has increased as we've been going. The period clock has counted down any time we've been in play and we have another lead jam accord and we get some points on this one and it was a five point pass we stopped the jam however the white team decides that they don't believe that was a five point pass and call an official review we have an official review button here on each team so for the white team we press that here you'll see their official review counter has been subtracted, it's been reflected in the scoreboard as an official review here and a flashing dot. 
uh, it's also reflected in various overlays. So that timeout can go on for a while because it's an official review. And in the case that they, um, it was awarded to them, they get it back. You'll want to update the official review number to show that they've had it. Um, we didn't mean to reset time there, actually. Uh, we'll start the next jam. You'll notice the timeout clock stops, period clock and jam clock continue uh, in accordance with the rules. There are some ways you can tweak the rule set in the scoreboard. Uh, the default rule set is a WFTDA sanctioned rule set. Uh, we can get into editing rule sets in a, in a future version uh, of the, the demos and, uh, and tutorials. Uh, so the going to uh, award a lead again here, give some points again. If you happen to give the wrong amount of points, you can take a point off with the score minus buttons for either team as well. Uh, and that's instantly reflected in the scoreboard, so we'll stop that jam. You'll notice at the top here, um, there's some undo buttons. Uh, they're designed for, if you didn't mean to start that jam, it will resume that clock, and as you notice, it will, uh, let's just start the jam again. So the lineup clock is at 11, start the jam, and then we realize we didn't mean to start the jam, unstart jam, and the time will be correctly added back to the lineup clock, as you can see. So that's just uh, if you accidentally use the unstart, and, and that the same applies to stop jam. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Back to where it was with all the clocks adjusted, which are really nice, convenient features. The timeout button and timeout works for both team timeouts and official reviews for each team. And you also have the team timeout counter there, which you can adjust if you need to. We'll just stop this jam here and we'll call a team timeout for this team. As you can see, their team timeout counts dropped and their team timeouts flashing, team timeouts indicated with the clock counting. Now we have a few other things to, uh, to talk about, and that's the period clock and the intermission clock. Uh, you can actually edit these clocks very slowly using these, or you can type in a time. I have key controls not enabled on here, and uh, just ignore that warning, but for now we're going to put in a time of that left on the period. Uh, so we're fast forwarding time. We're going to start the jam. And the jam is continuing. The period clock will expire. The jam clock will continue running uh, as would normally be the case. The jammer calls it off. Well, actually, look, we have a lead jammer before it can be called off. Uh, and the scoreboard doesn't actually stop you from stopping the jam earlier because that can happen as well. But uh, stop that jam there. And because the period of clock has expired, intermission will instantly begin. And we have an updated scoreboard showing our intermission. Um, once our intermission is over, again, a reminder, set that, watch the intermission clock countdown for the end of half time, five, four, three, two, and one, and we're back to, we're ready to play derby. Again, period starts, the period number automatically increases, we know we've got the right amount of time in the clock, and jam has started again, and we're rolling. Leads awarded, we add some more points. That's the very basics of the scoreboard. Um, I think that's everything you know to get started to, to get working at scrimmage. We'll go into some of the more uh, detailed features uh, in, in some other videos in the future, and there's some already out there for, for some of the new functions as well, but I hadn't done one yet focusing on just the basics, and I think that's really important for some of the uh, the new NSOs out there to uh, to get their head around. Go download the scoreboard software, play with it on your laptop. It runs on Linux, Mac, and um, uh, Windows, that's the other one, Windows. And um, yeah, there's plenty of support available in the Derby Scoreboard Facebook group if you do need it. The team's um, amazing, and I thank uh, everybody else uh, out there who, who supports everyone using this great Derby software. This is Flat Track Protocol for NSO TV on Download the Derby, Derby TV. Don't forget to go and check out our amazing coverage of 5x5 that we're producing with some overlays uh, out of the scoreboard. Um, coming to my term limit. 10 minute limit so this is ftp out thank you very much and i will see you on the track